Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. This is a biggie. It's a big episode because there's a lot of stuff going on in this episode, both in preparation for winter as well as the the big move. This is the big move and I was pretty excited about this. Um, there's officially enough progress that being have has has been done, has being done, listen, never mind, to the cottage that we can finally move in and make it official. It is officially our new base of operations. There's me uh, baking my the mold, the hammer mold, because I never did solve that mystery. I wouldn't say I scoured the footage because it is ours, but uh, I did kind of keep a close eye on it and I could never really find out what happened there. So I don't know. And I don't think you'll find out either because probably the footage is not in there. I, I'm just gonna chalk it up to, you know, probably something I did that was dumb. Um, here, I finally kind of figure out the, the chisel. I have a uh, kind of a 2001 a Space Odyssey moment in this episode which I'm looking forward to showing you about the chisel. But here, I just, uh, I wanted to clean up the amphitheater, amphitheater a little bit um, so that these corners matched. They still don't, and I might have to redo them later because they are done with normal uh, granite stone, cobblestone uh, blocks as opposed to the staircases. So uh, if I was gonna do it proper, I would do it with the staircases so that they actually match the surrounding blocks. Yes, I am that anal about it, I'm sorry. Um, but in any case, we're, we're going to be doing a lot. You can see, uh, you know, I, I tried to change the thumbnail a little bit, but we are officially in like fall now. The, the grass has turned very brown. You can see a couple of green patches here and there, but, uh, the bushes are now like a, a kind of a sepia and the, the ground is, uh, and the grass is kind of a sepia tone. So we are moving rapidly into winter time and I am not nearly prepared for that, unfortunately, but we'll figure it out. You know, this is a learning process. Um, there, we. I am also making a hammer, or sorry, not hammer, well, sorry, a axe mold for uh, making a, an actual proper axe because I do a lot of wood chopping and I prepare to do even more wood chopping and uh, it would be helpful to have proper tools. I like to include a little bit of a time lapse every once in a while and I really like the sound that the charcoal makes even sped up, it, it's, it's a really fun sound effect that the charcoal makes when you're breaking it. Sounds like charcoal, and I really, I, I like it a lot. I wanted to increase the size of this charcoal pit because um, I plan on doing a lot of smithing and smelting. And in fact, uh, now in the current episode, I have already done quite a bit of preparation. So, uh, you know, I, I needed I needed a big old pile of charcoal to, to make make what I needed to happen happen. So uh, here I've done a three by three charcoal pit for the purposes of, uh, you know, getting a, a bunch of bulk charcoal. Um, but uh, once we're done that, I mean, I kind of wish what I had been doing in preparation for winter is not so much um, just the food storage, although that is important, but also like I kind of wish I'd been doing more to uh, like, get leather going, um, you know, tan ourselves some leather because that's um, becoming very pressing, a pressing need. We're gonna wanna stay warm in the winter. Here's, I come to the conclusion that, uh, you know, berry mash is much better in my inventory if, for the purposes of spoiling it on purpose uh, than it is in a crate. So uh, there you there you have that. Um, I like to, I like to include some of my light bulb moments in, um, in these, you know, collections. I don't know, this was weird. It was like the middle of the day and there's just a drifter kind of hanging around. And I was, I don't know, I was looking something up or something and I like just started getting attacked and that seemed unnecessarily violent. So uh, that drifter was not long for this world. Still collecting more claystone. I'm gonna need a ton of claystone for what I have in mind for the cottage, but uh, it's it's gonna be a while. Uh, you know, just just kind of completing what we have now has taken a long time, but what what uh, I want to do is it's going to take a long time. Basically, going to be twice as much as what we've already done again, um, because I want to do a second story. Here, I uh, as I said in the last episode, have 
opted for destroying some of the re uh, surrounding ruins for the purposes of collecting granite cobblestone. And I'm still on the hunt for a candle uh, so we can make ourselves a lantern. And I mean, I know bees, bees are, you know, what we could, you know, if we could get some wax, bee wax, we could definitely make our own candle. But I opted instead for trying to uh, make use of the uh, ancient dirt that is underneath these ruins, which I think is probably a faster way because I have not seen any um, signs of bees. I don't know how to get that going. So that'll be something I learned. I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if it's something that only happens during the spring, but I really don't know, couldn't tell you. But um, we did get some ancient dirt. I have quite a bit of it now uh, for, you know, sifting, panning, and we also got some staircases to finish off the little amphitheater part. This was a this amphitheater wall was a, a little bit forward for some reason. It was like one block forward, and that was kind of bugging me. So I did go the extra mile and push it back a bit, and uh, we end up fin finishing the cellar, both the granite cobblestone as well as the birch half slabs or whatever they're called, birch slabs. Um, and like I said, I will fix that. I won't, uh, the, the birch slabs are not to stay. They're not sticking around. Um, once we have enough lanterns or whatever light source I end up going with, then I will uh, probably switch to just keeping it lit down there. And I've already um, kind of gotten fed up with, like I have to have some kind of light source when I go down there. You would, you might ask, oh, here's, here's the two <laughs> pause on that thought for a second here's here's our 2001 um moment here uh, you can you can hear the the you know the monkeys in the background smashing bones as i try to work out how does the chisel work and then uh it kind of dawns on me i, I finally see the plus sign at the bottom if you put a different brick in that plus sign it means you can add other bricks uh to you know details to uh your your blocks so uh, I, that is the chisel figured out, and, and then I can start to actually detail our, our cottage once and for all. I don't yet know. I have been doing a lot of, um, like, researching on, like, various, you know, house architectures online, like cottages, uh, maybe, like, Welsh cottages or windmills, um, old-timey kind of, like, house infrastructure, and I do want it to match the aesthetic of vintage story and I have a, a few ideas in mind and for how to achieve that goal but it's going to be a process it's not something I'm going to do all in one episode although I don't know maybe I will who knows you know I may just like cave and like okay I'm sick of the house looking like this let's actually make it look proper I'm not to, I'm not really one of the a kind of person who like can focus on making the house or a, a thing in like a Minecraft or a vintage story look good I kind of just focus on the progress until I'm comfortable enough that I have uh, time afforded to me to to actually make you know the place look nice so that's how I end up living in a lot of shacks um, because you know I, I spend a lot of time focusing on like getting food getting resources and not as much time making my house look good so uh, in this series i mean i did want to end up in something that looked pleasant and that hasn't happened yet right now it kind of looks like a big prison but i i assure you that will change and this will be uh you know a work in progress so we finally have our our hammer mold back and i put it in that in that little shelf that thing is very satisfying i really appreciate its presence in the world you know uh, th th like I say, that's the kind of thing I really appreciate in Vintage Story is like tools and uh, items that kind of m make your world feel functional and make it feel lived in. You could very easily just put uh, tool molds into a crate or something um, or a chest and that would be fine. But the fact that you have a tool or mold shelf means you have a visual representation of that uh mold in in real space and you can more easily kind of grab it see what you've got see what you need and um that that does a lot more to make your pl your space feel lived in and uh give you it's you know like form and function kind of shaking hands i really appreciate that 
every time it happens in Vintage Story. So here's here's I discovering the problem with the uh, birch slabs is you can't place anything on them. Uh, so I have to kind of work around that limitation for now. Um, is it worth having them? It, you know, like is it worth trading off uh, that that space being like I don't know a problem in order to have not have monsters spawn down there? I think it is, but yeah, you, know, you can see I, I opt out of having the uh, fruit press down there. I don't think it's worth it. Um, but that does mean I'm going to have to do a lot of running up and down in order to like, you know, we'll do our fruit press up here and then we run down. And I'm also preserving berries in the uh, cellar now in my current episode. So that means I have to, you know, run down, store the berries, you know, run up, press the berries, run back down, you know, put the juice in the in the barrels. It's a lot of it's a it's a very uh, intensive kind of stuff. I will eventually have the fruit press down in the cellar, but you know, again, once we have actual, hey, there it is. <laughs> so we got did our panning, and after about two or three pans, I got two candles. So without wasting another moment, I uh, went ahead and finally made the lantern. I had that copper plate saved up, basically since the like episode seven where I started doing smithing. It was the first thing I made, or one of the first things I made. So I finally have a lantern and it works uh, a charm. Unfortunately, it does come up, uh, come with a downside, which is that you can't light uh, any fires with it, which, you know, makes sense, I suppose. Um, you know, I guess if it was in real life, you might be able to like open a little door in the lantern and then use the candle to light a fire or something but i understand there has to be some kind of limitation um so that is a downside to the lantern so you still have to have a torch available uh here someone mentioned this to me but i did kind of figure this out on my own is um, that you can use the barrel to make dough much quicker than using a bowl and you don't have to do nearly as much uh, inventory juggling in order to make that happen so that's very very convenient there's our final uh, mold for now. That is a prospector's pick mold, which we're definitely going to need. But back to the lantern for a moment. The, the upside to the lantern is obviously it doesn't go out when you uh, submerge yourself in water, which happens more often than you might think. And it also covers way more ground in terms of how, like how far you can see. And it's a much, much better light source for actually placing in your world once you have enough of them. But anyway, back to what we're doing now. So this was very exciting to me, which you know, again is another thing I really appreciate about Vintage Story is you really kind of appreciate the small victories, the small milestones. A pie, making a pie, it just seems to me like, wow, this is so high tech comparatively speaking to other stuff that I do. It's like, you know, I need enough food to live. You know, I have to go and forage for berries and you know, scraps and, and it feels so like limited and primitive. And then you get to a moment where it's like, I can make a pie. That's ridiculous. You know, I've got an oven. I've spent all the time and resources I need to make something like a table. Um, so this corner of the room, uh, is going to, or corner of the house or cottage, I should say, is slowly going to become a kitchen. You can see I've already opted for having multiple tables so I can have multiple pies in progress. Pies are really cool. Um, they're a really convenient way of kind of putting all of your stuff together, like all of your food into one convenient source. So, uh, you know, like after you've made your dough, uh, when you, once you've collected your berries, once you've collected your um, vegetables, it's a good way to just kind of like put it all together. You can't mix like sweet and savory but you can mix food sources so like different berries work for the for the pie um, different vegetables mixed together and it looks very nice when when you're making it and the pie itself looks pretty cool i did encounter a bug however which, which is once you have cooked the pie once the pie has finished and uh you you pull it out if you put it on the table i found that i couldn't pick it up again this is probably a bug that will be fixed in the future. But yeah, I make another table, you'll see here, and um, put the pie on the table, and then that pie is just stuck there. But um, the, the way I got it up eventually was I used a knife to cut 
slabs off, which is the function of the pie. You can cut a piece off and then take, you know, have like a snack, a portion of pie. I know I'm talking a lot about pies right now, probably, I don't know about you, but it's making me hungry, but um, I don't know. I'm just very impressed by this pie mechanic. It's it's really good. It It suits the aesthetic of Vintage Story, but it also is functionally very useful for, uh, you know, kind of putting all of your food into like one kind of source. I did burn one pie, unfortunately, you know, it happens. Uh, I, I guess, you know, I, I left one in the oven while I uh, went to bed and th going to bed with anything pending means that it's probably going to fail in some form. Uh, you know, a lot of time has passed. So here is, I'm um, trying to get the cellar going. Uh, and so I have to kind of make these makeshift shelf units. I kind of wish there was a different way to do this. Uh, maybe there is a better way that people have come up with, but I kind of like what I do here. It's okay. It's functional. And, you know, I, I think that it works. But uh, I might come back to it again in the future and see if I can't come up with something better. So uh, this is, you'll see here, it's a, kind of a work in progress. First of all, the pie does not go on the shelves. So I opt instead for having these blocks, which kind of suit the shelves. Um, since they're taller than the half slabs, they kind of feel like their own little shelf. So that is pretty good for the pies. Yes, I could have just like cut them and then put them in a crate, but I kind of like this aesthetically speaking more. Um, and then I have a chest in between each shelf. And I like that because it means it's um, you can reach it from both sides. So say I'm doing something on one side and I need to access the chest, then I can. So that makes this um, whole shelving unit pretty functional in that it covers every ground. I have shelves, a surface to place objects on, and then the chests in, to, to uh, store food in. I do end up storing the food, or uh, like the bread inside the chest in order to preserve it longer. I'm pretty sure it preserves longer in the chest, but I'm not sure and I haven't really bothered to look into it, but I do know that you know putting it in the chest is probably optimal. Um, this is the kind of thought process you end up having when you're trying to like preserve foods for the winter and you have a you know, actual number for how long food preserves. If it was real life, I just have to find out how long it preserves by tracking it in real time like oh yeah this bread seems to have gone moldy but you know that it, it is what it is so we're doing a little bit of farming we have to maintain the farm i think this was a rushed job because i realized i hadn't like watered the farm in a few days and uh you know you gotta gotta keep an eye on it and uh we're putting the rest of the bread i, I don't know if i had like a bunch of dough and i don't have like enough food for making pies. So I, I was like, yeah, well, we're, we're making bread. Bread stays pretty well. But like I said in, in a couple a couple episodes ago, the best thing to do, honestly, is to just keep your flour as flour if you're worried about preserving food. Because you can always make bread later, right? That's, that's not something you're going to uh, be, that's not something that's gated by the season. Like, it doesn't matter if it's winter. You can always make bread. You can always make pies so long as you have the filling. But, um, you know, once you've made the pie, then it's not going to keep forever. You can see there, 36 days, that bread is going to keep. That's that's not long enough for a full season, as far as I know, although Vintage Story might abstract uh, how long it takes for a season to pass. So best thing to do is to keep it as flour because then it keeps for like 60 days or something ridiculous like that. And uh, then you can always rotate your foods, you know, see what needs to be eaten sooner, what when it's going to spoil. And, you know, on the off chance it does spoil, you can always throw it in the barrel and as rot. So nothing goes to waste. And that's another thing I really appreciate in this game is like nothing, nothing is without its use uh, or function. Um, but like, there's a, there's a way to optimize things for sure. So here I am trying to sort of suss out, does the crock, um, do better in the chest or does it do better on the shelf? I think it was kind of the same. So I opted for, uh, something more 
as, not, not just aesthetic, but I mean, it's easier to see something when it's on the shelf. It's also easier to rotate things. Like the shelf has an actual method of rotation because it has a back part of the shelf and the front part of the shelf. So you could, you know, put the stuff that's sooner to spoilage in the front and that way it gets eaten first. Um, you know, unlike a grocery store, <laughs> Well, I guess exactly like a grocery store. So they, you know, they put the the stale bread in the front, um, and then move it to the back. I used to I used to stock bread, so I know these things. Let's see, um, so there's our, our turnips, which um, I I don't I can't remember if I make some more stew or soup with them, but here I, I definitely make some turnip pie, um, which really doesn't sound appealing to me, but I realize I also have onions, so. Uh, I could make an onion and turnip pie, which does sound slightly more appealing. I would try an onion and turnip pie in real life. I don't think I would try a purely turnip pie. I think that sounds kind of weird. I don't know. I guess it depends on how you season it. Maybe I'd try it. I like to pretend I'm open-minded to these kind of things. But um, I will say in this game, at least the turnip and onion pie looks good nice like when as you're making it i really like big ups to the devs for like putting the time into like have different looking filling depending on how you're filling it like mixed vegetables looks different from just like turnip or onion and i like that's that's time spent someone put a lot of care into that i really appreciate little details like that so um you know our sh this is pretty much what our shelf is going to end up looking like and uh, once we're done all our pies, uh, then, you know, that bottom shelf looks pretty good. And uh, I guess what I, I didn't realize, but, you know, make dedicating all of the berries to pies means we can make juice out of them. But I'm not really yet sure what the function or purpose of making juice over, say, like making something um, like a pie out of them <laughs> would be. But I, I know you can make wine. I don't know what wine is for yet. So... Here, I'm trying to like keep an eye on my pie baking while I also multitask and grind some bones. That's gonna be useful later. And here we, we see that for the first time, it will not be the last time, uh, me forgetting my lantern. Because I was gonna say, the reason I ever forget it is because the lantern is such a good light source when you place it on the ground. It almost lights the entire cottage by itself. So I end up placing it on the ground uh, and then I end up forgetting it when I go down into the cellar. So uh, it's it's kind of neat. You have to like actually like grab it and then go down in the cellar because I don't know. It just feels a bit more immersive than than I don't know what would the alternative be. I guess the cell. I guess it really it, it it's reliant on the lighting system of Vintage Story. How dark things get. They get so dark you really can't see. So um, I think this is the last bag I make and you can see I'm, I'm kind of toying with the idea of making a mining bag which is very useful um, mining bags are a bit more specific they can only carry rocks and ores and stuff like that but they carry more of them so uh, that's you know I'm kind of toying with the idea and I've kind of gotten this whole juggling inventory spaces down to a science so I can you know put items around like take them out of a basket even without knowing which basket they're in so that I empty it and then I turn the basket back into cattails which again I like the idea of recycling what we what we had this gets changed around later but these are empty crocs they're going to end up actually up near the quotation marks kitchen and uh, you can see I'm removing everything down from this makeshift makeshift cellar you get a little bit of a spook here as a monster comes crawling up from the what was supposed to be the mine. Um, I don't know what I'm, if I'm going to do anything with that mine shaft, but I, I don't think I care to do anything about it. Just kind of leave it there, I guess. That is the uh, the mark of man having destroyed a bit of the environment for their own personal gain. You know, <laughs> there's a bit of social commentary in your vintage story, but. Uh, we finally have enough rot. I think this is the last bit of rot I need to fill the barrel. Uh, and we'll see exactly what, how long we're, we're going to have to wait next. But this was really exciting for me. You know, like ripping up the, the little space I had made um, was kind of like a bittersweet, but also exciting to try and like 
take our our pure function and fit it into form and uh, and make a space that you know is lived in in the cottage and also try and figure out how I want things set up so that I can properly like actually do things like not just kind of lived in a cramped space like that so there's there's the last bit of rot the barrel is full and it needs to wait for 20 days before it is compost. That is kind of absurd, but it is realistic. Um, it's going to be super, super useful when we actually get that compost, but like that is going to be well into winter time that we actually get the compost, which is not ideal because I was kind of hoping to have our uh, sort of indoor farm set up. Uh, before winter time that's just straight up not going to happen spoilers but winter is basically upon us um in fact i'm not even sure if you can see but some of the plants are already slowing their growth um, because it's starting to get cold uh so i'm not sure how to deal with that necessarily i'm not sure how we're going to stay satiated um through the winter time you know, i'm playing with the idea of putting charcoal on the shelf but that's not why I put those shelves there. The shelves are actually to hold um, bars, and uh, I, d I have already done a bit of smithing and filled a bunch of bars with copper. I do want to move away from copper. That's what the purpose of the prospecting pick is, so that I can find tin and make bronze and iron and actually get some proper metals going. But um, we'll have one more bout of copper tech before I move on. And, uh, you know, like a, one thing at a time, you know, like I'm, I'm all, uh, basically going to have to deal with the, uh, the, the problems of winter time before I can deal with trying to upgrade my tech. So you can see I have that torch set up above the oven for the purposes of, you know, so I can light the fire whenever I need to, which is pretty good. And I've opted for having empty crocks up there, uh, you know, so when I finish cooking a meal, and there's no space for a fire pit just yet, but there will be. Um, that happens in the next episode. And I have a bowl down there that's for the purposes of eating food. <laughs> but anyway, if you enjoyed this, definitely hit that like button. Consider subscribing for more content, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Oh, <laughs> oh,